Hello everyone. I hope everybody is fine and didn't have too much Guinness yesterday night. Um, so we're here today. I'm gonna present you a case study about a, a project uh, we had X released a couple of months ago. Um, so the the goal is to, of course, present the client, the project itself, and then to present you all the problems uh, the client addressed us and the solution we we propose to solve them. Um, so, I'm Ronnie, I work at Adyact as a project manager, and I was actually the manager in charge of this project, so I think I'm the best person to present you this case study. Before we start, a, a few words about Adyact, so we're a digital agency specialized in Drupal solutions, so we, we do only Drupal. Uh, we do all kind of projects, multi-site, media website, e-commerce, and of course, internet. Uh, we have large clients based in Europe. Uh, and the large players there we have a couple of offices in Europe and and since a couple of months we are starting to expand this to the to the American market so the client we're talking about today um, I've presented a couple of logo here because it might be known as different names if you're from France you might know him as uh, La Gardia Travel Retail uh, if, if you have visited like a couple of airports in Paris or in France you might have seen the buy Paris tours uh, in Europe, it's mm, it's known as Alia Duty Free. So in Poland, in Spain, Italy, etc., you will see Alia Duty Free stores. In the United States, you will see more Paradise Lagarde. So yeah, depending where you're located, the brand is a bit different. Uh, but let's call it today uh, Alia. Uh, so what wha what's Alia? So they uh, they manage. Uh, a lot of duty-free stores, uh, about 500 dispatched in four universes. So we have the alcohol, obviously, tobacco, gastronomy, confessory. We have all the sector of perfume and cosmetics. We have all the specialties, which are all the electronic devices. And uh, the last one is uh, the fashion universe, which is pretty big, all the, the luxury, uh, luxury commerce. Uh, those stores cover about 222 airports uh, over four continents. So they are dispatched over 31 countries in the world, mainly in Europe, but also in uh, Asia, uh, like Singapore, China, in Australia, in North America. So they are dispatched all over the world. Um, so the main the main business is uh, is luxury commerce. Uh, the major part of their business is luxury. Uh, like they have a couple of they own like their own luxury stores are Dior, Prada, like even uh, even Victoria's Secret, and do about one billion revenue uh, per year. So all those stores are were managed previously by um, an internet based on uh, on XWiki. So for those who don't know XWiki, it's um it's a platform. It's a platform to, to manage content. Um, so, actually, I don't really know why they use this solution um, to build their previous internet. Uh, I suppose that the the need was pretty small at the beginning, and that it starts to grow up and grow up, and then the solution was not adapted at all at the end. So they started a new RFP uh, to rebuild the brand new internet. Um, and actually, th the funny story about this RFP is that um, it started with a, a cold call from us. So we were not involved in this RFP. So our our unique uh, sales guy uh, called the company. He started to talk with uh, the CTO, and and finally he, he understood that they are running this uh, this new internet, and we we tried to to get uh, to get involved in this RFP. Um, so. We they, they they accepted so they actually they already started the, the RFP process but they finally accepted to 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 put it in the in the process and uh, so we finally got, got uh, shortlisted and we were facing actually uh, two big companies which are CGI and Sitecore they were proposing their their own solutions and our side of course we were proposing uh, Drupal as a as a, a platform uh, at that time. We proposed Drupal 7 because Drupal 8 was not uh, enough mature to build this kind of uh, big projects. 
And when we proposed Drupal, they actually loved it. Uh, why? So, <coughs> first of all, for his flexibility, and then most important, uh, the cost. It was obviously uh, our competitor were much more expensive than us with their solution. Uh, so finally, we, we got the project. Um, and uh, and we we try to to address all the problems. So um, how we how we transformed all their all their problems into into solutions. The first uh, problem they addressed us, uh, and actually the most important, uh, XWiki was not very comfortable to use. Um, so actually it was at a certain point not used at all and managers in the store started to to use emails instead of their intranet so everybody was overloaded with emails and um, what we call the contributors so the health quarters the marketing uh, purchase mar uh, communications teams are always sending information to the stores for example um, to an alcohol store they can send like an email saying okay please apply this merchandising plan in stores uh, uh, ABC, um, please uh, put the Renard champagne at the top of the stores. Please display the whiskey right here. Uh, please uh, install a Toblerone stand. So all kind of information. Those informations are provided by the headquarter uh, to directly to the store. So as XWiki was not used, uh, they were sending emails. So managers were overloaded and losing a lot of time. As you know, in the kind of business, Time is money, um, and secondly, when uh, so, it's it's actually first of all hard just to 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 get rid of all the emails to find all the <coughs> useful information that they need to process, and then it was also hard to answer to everybody to say okay this was applied this is was not done this is in progress so emails was definitely not the um, the good tool to use for this kind of communication. So. Our UX experts uh, built a brand new interface, though so it's very close to, as you can see, um, to email applications. Uh, if you're familiar with mail or with uh, Outlook, or even with Gmail, um, you can see you can see at the left like all the the filters that you have. We have uh, a news feed and then the content displayed at the right. So. I think at the first look, you're not very, uh, I see you taking picture, I will send the presentation after, no worries. <laughs> um, so, the co so when you see this interface for the first time, you're not like very, uh, you're not lost. Um, because yeah, the managers, so managers in stores, we have people very young, we have people less young. So it should be addressed to all, all kind of profile, not only, uh, like people between 30 and 40 years old. Um, so we have this 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 news feed with infinite scroll system in the, in the in the center. We have the main navigation at the top, and at the <coughs> top right we have all the settings and actions. Uh, as you can see, um, you have all the. Um, Notification, so it's pretty close to, for example, Facebook. Uh, you have the notification at the, the top right. You have all the settings, the your small profile. So people understand actually the interface. When they see it, they understand that settings are at the top right. Uh, my content is in the middle. Uh, left is using for filtering, etc. Pretty interesting. Um, actually, here each um, each content we send is we, c we call it in news. It's actually it's actually an action can be either an action or an information sent to the stores. So as I, I provide you the example before, so applying a merchandising plan is kind of action. It can be either, uh, okay, uh, this, this, this Renard champagne is, uh, uh, we will apply the promotion on this Renard, so buy two, get three. So all kind of actions that the stores need to set up uh, directly. For the interface actually, one of the most important things that it was approved by the manager. So uh, we we had during the project a couple of uh, ambassadors, so people from the stores, real managers involved in the project. Uh, they were part of the workshop, and then 
they were the final validator. So we obviously had a, a project manager on the client side, but you know, the project manager is only an, an interface between the, the final client and, and the agency. And I think one of the, one of the <coughs> factor of this success is that the manager decided what they wanted to have, so what was really helpful for them. So they were involved, they were working with our UX experts. Actually, we visited a couple of stores in Paris, uh, in our two airports in Rossi and Orly. Um, and we finally uh, got to this conclusion where uh, we have like this nice inter interface, we have all the notification systems, all the interactions. For example, here we have the content of, um, of, uh, of a news, we have so all the useful uh, links, um, uh, documents attached to the content. We have a specific status for each content. We ha we can assign a news to somebody. We can attach a picture. We can submit comments. So you have really all the useful information in uh, quickly accessible. I will go deeper into details a bit later about this this, uh, this interface. Other interface that we set up is like a, a, a calendar where you can have a, an overview of um, an overview of all the actions that you need to perform on a specific week because uh, from time to time, like before, the managers didn't have like the vision on what they really need to do. Um, they, for example, here on a, on a specific week, they uh, they can see that okay. For example, on during the Christmas meet, we are definitely overloaded. We have like uh, 20 marketing operation to set up, so we definitely need to to hire some people just for this period. So it's very easy to them to see the amount of work they need to perform during a specific period. Usually, operations are sent to the stores like up to three months before they need to do them, so they can anticipate the load and organize their team in a different way. So. This interface as well was 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 built with uh, uh, with the managers uh, and our UX experts. Um, the interesting thing is that we actually took a lot of time to build this because usually when a client tell you you need a calendar, so you think about something close to to Google Calendar or something with a, a weekly, daily, yearly view. But here the, the need is a bit different. We don't need actually. A daily calendar. We don't need to know the hours. We just need to see the concurrent events happening uh, during specific weeks and expanding on a couple of weeks. Uh, work a couple of weeks. The next point I want to present to you is um, a notification system. So, in order to not lose the informations, we implemented this uh, notification system based on the specific events. So, for example, um, when the managers receive the news. He can assign it to somebody in his own team. So uh, when people receive uh, a news assigned to him, he will be um, notified. Uh, when a news is, is done also, he will get another notifications. When somebody comment your news, you will get notification. And when somebody answer your comment, so a bit similar to Facebook system, you will also get notification. So each time you're involved with somewhere in the internet, uh, you know where to go uh, and you do not lose any, any information. Informations. So um, we're sending data uh, to the stores, um, but also one of the, the problems we faced before is that the stores were receiving all the data from like everybody. So actually, they didn't really know um, what data concerns their stores, what data doesn't concern. So they were overloaded by a lot of, of content that it's not necessarily um, useful for them. So again, they were losing time and were not very efficient in their work. So the problem is we addressed here is how how do we send the information to only the concerned person? Uh, so we we started by studying their their business structure, which looks like something like this simplified version. But as you can see, you have different level. So the highest level is the country. So each organization is a country, then you have different company uh, in each country. You have a sales organization, you have the sport store platform, which is actually the airport. Each airport, you have a couple of terminal, and then in each terminal, you have a couple of stores. So the store is the level, the lowest level of our structure. 
and the country is a, is a higher level. So the idea here is was to to send a content just to um, a specific uh, specific scope. So for example, I like to to send this information to all the stores uh, in United States, or I need to send uh, those uh, content only to Terminal Two in Dublin, or I need to send it to a specific store in Paris, for example. To organize this, we used um, organic groups uh, module. Uh, which is um, uh, available on Drupal.org. So very, very easy here to set up like a scope of visibility based on on information that you use to set up. So you set up like collections of content and then you address this content uh, to somebody. So uh, on the left side, you can see, um, you can see a part of the creation of the news. So we have a specific block when we can address the content to somebody so you can select uh, the scope or the level of scope you want to send the information and then you select like okay do I want to send it to a terminal do I want to send it to a store do I want to send it to a country um, this structure is imported every day via an automatic interface so every night all the all the structures you import so on their side they have their BI whereas I they integrate all the, the new stores, all the new setup, and we import this uh, directly every day. On the other side, um, on the right side, so you have um, a screenshot of a, of a user profile. So users are also imported automatically. It's a live synchronization, it's a live synchronization with their active directory. Um, the, um, and on each, each user is assigned to a couple of stores. So here is his user is a manager. So his manager is responsible of one of several stores, in general, up to four or five stores. Um, and here, as each manager is assigned to uh, stores and content is assigned to stores or high level, then it's very easy to know which content to display for each store. So on the, on the general interface, each each, uh, each manager filter, filters the content per store and then they can see only the content that they are concerned by. As we said, the we have like stores all over the world, so problems was we need to roll out very quickly new stores, new countries, new new environments. So actually, with this architecture, opening in new stores is, is pretty easy. Actually, we don't have to do anything on the stories imported in Drupal. So all the, the structure is actually only taxonomies. So on the taxonomies present in Drupal, uh, you can directly send content to it. So the only manual thing you need to do is in case we they open stores in a new country. Um, well, we can obviously import the country taxonomy, but actually there is a specific rules that depend on countries. The countries have a currency and he has, it has um, a rounding rule. So according to each country, we have those different rounding rules for promotion calculation. Um, for a stake, country's creation is manually and then on the current you set up by the, by the client, it's actually very easy, it's only create a taxonomy term. On the taxonomy term is set up, we can directly import uh, all the structures that belongs to, to this country. Next point I want to, to address is uh, <coughs> tracking of the information. So the contributors, uh, the people that marketing and purchasing uh, send informations to the stores, um, but they do not get any feedback. So when they were sending emails, um, they didn't know like what's what was happening uh, besides. So is the uh, is the information processed? Is it in progress? How many stores performed uh, my my actions? It was very hard to to get get rid of all these things. And other point was to have like global KPI information on all, all the stores. So based on our interface, I, I presented it quickly before, but we have like a couple of status. Those status are depending on, uh, on, on each store. So actually for a specific news, uh, the status is different per store. So this is here, we did a custom development. We have table where we store all the, um, all the status for, for a given news. Uh, and then the managers can directly say, okay, this news 
is not processed, I'm processing it uh, and or it's done. It's actually pretty close to, for example, if you're using bug tracker systems like Redmine, Jira or Mantis, for example, uh, this, this system is, is pretty obvious. Uh, you just set up a status for your information. You can assign it. So as a manager, I can assign my, my information uh, to somebody in my team. So I have the filtered users according to my store and I, I can assign it to somebody of my team. And then finally, once the, the information is assigned to somebody and then processed, like here, we can also attach um, a picture, like we call it a proof picture. For example, uh, okay, I we deployed this uh, merchandising plan, the, the, the booth for Toblerone is ready. Here is the picture, they can see how it's set up. So the people directly for the health quarter see directly the, the results from the store. So with their iPad, they take a picture and they attach it directly here. On the other, so that was um, the front office part, uh, the manager's point of view. From the back end point of view, the contributors have an overview of all the stores where they send the information. So here, for example, we send the we send the news to I don't know like 15, 15 stores, and I can see very quickly which store performed my action, which store did not, which store is performing. I have like global KPI at the top uh, to see like how many percentage of the stores processed my news. Uh, and well, here it's not displayed, but in case they attach an image, they can you can also directly see the image here. So you have a, a global overview on the, on your information. So um, you also have global KPI uh, for the top management. For example, you can see the number of news created per month, per theme, uh, per universe. You can see uh, which stores are processing uh, a lot of uh, information, which stores are not doing their job correctly. You can see which managers are reacting, uh, reacting very quickly. So who are the people who, uh, who who directly process the news and who are the people who need to, to recall a couple of times to, to get rid of your, uh, your, your content. <coughs> um, another problem that we, we had uh, at the beginning, uh, the, um, some stores doesn't have a physical location. So they, for example, a lot of uh, in a uh, lot of airports, you have like some fashion, fashion stores who have like only a booth in the center of the airport. They don't have like a real, real store. And the problem is with those stores is that they do not have like uh, a real connection internet. They depend on the wi the airport Wi-Fi. And as you know, this Wi-Fi really, really sucks. <laughs> uh, it's it's quite it's quite complicated to to use it for for business purpose. So. The idea, first of all, what they requested in the RFP is to have like an iPad, an iPad application uh, to to like to redo actually the same internet um, in order to to like get all the download the content and and being able to access uh, the internet uh, without internet. And we actually convinced them uh, to not go for this solution, but instead of this, um, instead of this to to use the same application, so the same Drupal application, um, and to use a, an offline layer so they can use it uh, without internet connection. Uh, there is multiple advantage. Actually, the first one is obviously the cost. You're developing only one application. Uh, having like another iOS application will cost much more money and much more time. And the second one is, of course, it's easier to maintain. You have only, only one application at the end. So if you're, for example, familiar with Google Drive, uh, probably you have already seen something like this at the top. When you lose your connection, uh, you have like a small mistake saying, yeah, you lost your collection. We'll try to reconnect after a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes. Uh, we use a small JavaScript library called HubSpot for this. Um, so it only tracks if you have a connection or if you don't have a connection. Uh, and during offline mode, managers can do a couple of actions. They can actually read the content. So all the content is accessible even if they don't have an internet connection. So all the content is preloaded. 
Uh, and the second one, they can also perform actions. They can change the store status. They can insert a comment. So they can do a couple of actions that will be sent to our database and they will get an internet connection. So it's, it's pretty comfortable to them. It's pretty transparent. Uh, they know that they don't have internet, but once they will re recover uh, connections, all the actions are not lost. They will be they will be they will say and, and sent to the to the um, to the platform. So to to build this, um, we used two technologies actually. Uh, used uh, HTML5 app cache for pre-caching content. Uh, so we implemented actually a couple of, of hooks um, to to preload the list of dynamic page. For example, what it's actually a bit complicated to to offline all the internet, but we can, for example. Um, preload like uh, the last uh, 200 views, the last uh, 200 merchandising elements, etc. So we can preload a lot of, of content according to your store, so we only download the content you're interested by. Uh, and we combine this uh, with uh, IndexedDB. Uh, why IndexedDB? Because uh, it's not possible with AppCache to, to store AJAX requests, so as our, all our application is based on, on AJAX, it's like we do not reload the page at each click. Uh, all those AJAX requests are, are, are preloaded directly in IndexedDB. Well, for the implementation, so as I said, we, we preload a lot of um, a lot of content directly uh, directly in Drupal uh, and store all the actions that uh, that were done uh, on the, uh, that were done directly on the on the iPad, so actually the offline mode is only used by, by the, the iPad application. It also works with desktop, but it's it's in general less useful. Um, and once the internet connection is recovered, uh, we uh, we we send all of the information directly to the platform. So this kind of technology have also a couple of disadvantage disadvantages. Uh, first one, it doesn't work with basic authentication. So if you have basic authentication, you will have to find a workaround. Uh, so we had just this problem during the, um, during the development, as our environments are protected by basic basic authentication. So one workaround is just to use uh, IP filtering instead of uh, basic authentication. Uh, second problem is the access denied page. So you can face a couple of issues if the the page you're trying to um, to preload are not accessible for a specific user. So we need to test that each each page is really accessible by this user. Here we have like complex uh, visibility rules like these users can only access this news because it's affected to this store. So you need to test all the all the, all the access denied uh, issues before before you preload all the cache. Because actually on our side we have two ways to build the cache. When you visit a page you will you will add an element to the cache and the other ways, of course, to, to preload all the elements. And the last one uh, is the multi-user. So if you are connected uh, as a specific user on your iPad and you log out and you log in with another user, uh, we had uh, uh, we had the issue where the, the second user was saying the content of the first user. So here you make to make sure that you clean up uh, your manifest file. You clean up your index DB and uh, at uh, at the, the logout of the application. <coughs> Last point I want to address here is um, the promotion. So our our platform is um, is used as a, uh, as computing station. So actually, the the previous platform as was also used as computing station. Um, they need to calculate all kind of promotions directly in their internet. So previously, uh, they had two real issues. The first one was the process. In order to import and calculate promotion, they had to import three CSV file. The first one was the product CSV file. The second one was the price because you can have a couple of price per product per store. And the last one was finally the promotion, f uh, the promotion themselves. So it was a quite a long complex, uh, quite a long uh, process and complicated. And the second issue was a performance. So in general, per, uh, promotions are inserted into the platform at the beginning of each month. And we have like hundreds and hundreds of contributors uh, uploading content at the same moment in the platform, uh, which cause actually 
big load because we are like doing complex operations uh, in the platform, which which like impacts the performance. So what we propose here is uh, so obviously we always have this promotion CSV import file to import the promotion, but um, in order to to remove the um, remove the product and price uh, uh, CSV imp uh, CSV files uh, we have that directly an interface with SAP where we we download we where we download the products and the price uh, for each promotion we store it in Drupal and then we calculate directly the, the promotions based on on those price so we have the live price uh, purchase price sales price directly from from SAP um, for the performance point of view, so we build an asynchronous uh, import interface. The goal here was to being able to to upload a lot of a lot of promotions without impacting the performance of the application. So once you you upload uh, a file, it's inserted in a queue. So using the queue API of Drupal, uh, and the and the upload is done in in an asynchronous uh, mode. So you don't see the result directly. Your your import will have a, a pending status, and when it will be processed by the queue, you will see, for example, uh, an in progress uh, an in progress status. And then when it will be done, you will get an email saying, "Okay, your import is done. This is the results. Or everything was imported well, or we got a couple of errors. Please check the error files." Um, so this is pretty useful for the managers. They just drop the files, and then they will get an email later when the their th promotions are, are performed. So if there is a lot of people uploading a lot, a lot of content at the same time, it might take a couple of hours, but at the end, everything is imported in a good way. Another point is you can have a history of all the imported files, so you can see who uploaded what. If I see my colleague already uh, uploaded this, I do not to, to re-upload it. So I can see directly all the promotions uploaded by a specific uh, purchase person. Um, and I can filter by status, so I have a, a very detailed dashboard just to access all of the imports. We um, we have complex uh, promotion rules. So here is a small, uh, small like some examples. We have like basic discount. We have, for example, buy two get three. Uh, we have. Uh, buy uh, five products, get a uh, ten percentage uh, discount on this product. So there is a, a couple of, of promotion rules that have been set up and are calculated live um, uh, directly by uh, by the platform. Um, so yeah, uh, as uh, as you can see, the the, the calculations are uh, the calculations are are, are are done and and stored directly during the import. And the goal is being ec to to export actually all this data. The contributors only use this platform to calculate and then export the data. Of course, the store uh, can also see all the um, the promotion price directly uh, from their stores, and they have always the the good information. Um, we have some time before we switch to question. Um, so I was planning to do a small uh, small live demo, so you can see actually uh, directly the, the interface and take pictures if you want. Um, I will just try to share browser. Right here. So, let me start with this. Uh, one moment. Okay. Oops. So, uh, as I described before, we have all the um, the filters at the left side. You can actually it's not very comfortable for me. One moment. We'll display the same here. So, uh, as you can see, uh, on the left side you have all the filters, so you can 
uh, you can select the content of a specific theme all the content uh, for a specific store so actually the store is a mandatory uh, is a mandatory filter you always need to select one store why because actually each content is displayed for a specific store so when I click on the content all the data so all this data uh, is is displayed for uh, a given store so the status is display displayed for this store the people assigned uh, to this news is also, also displayed for this uh, specific store uh, as comments and pictures so if I, I well this is pre so if I change for example the status of this of this news to new to in progress and go to another store for example what was test new item You can see that for the same news here, the status is different because it's another store. So we have really information uh, based uh, per per store. Then you have filters on universe, filters on if you want to see only the, the new information, the progress or uh, the, the completed information. As you have on Outlook, for example, on, or on Mail, you have the filters. So here you can filter by publication date or application date. On the news, so we have the title, date some images to illustrate the content attach document or links small description the status so news in progress or or, or done you can um, you can attach uh, you can attach uh, the news to to somebody so uh, any, well, I think there is nobody assigned to this uh, to attach to this store so there is no people in my team and on the um, once the news is completed, then you can uh, attach a, a picture. It will be sent to the contributor to to say, okay, we we perform the we perform the action. We also have like small comment uh, module at the end, uh, which is pretty useful. For example, I'm a contributor. I sent an information to the store. Okay, um, please find attached the merchandising plan. And it can happen that the people forget to attach the the, the, the attachment. So. Here's a manager would just say, okay, uh, for example, yeah, you forgot, oh yeah, you forgot the, the yeah, you forgot the, the attachment. Uh, please, uh, please put it in the the content. Uh, the, the contributor will get directly notification and will be alerted that something is wrong in this information, and he will be able to quickly react. So it's it's also a bit similar to Facebook. Uh, it's really like a chat. You can post comment and you can reply on comment. Um, so we also have this calendar module uh, when you can see all the all the different information. So well, here it's, it's pre-production environment. We have a lot of test informations. Uh, you can see this for a specific week. You can navigate from new week to week, and you can also go directly to uh, a specific uh, specific date. Then we have a lot of other modules like the merchandising module, which is a bit similar uh, as uh, the news module. But here you can see all the, the merchandising plan for a specific brand or specific universe. For example, if I like to check like all the fashion uh, merchandising plan or for example, all the league war merchandising plan. Uh, here I can see for example, the cognac merchandising plan. I have all the, um, uh, all the file attached and I can directly uh, well, get rid of the information and do what I want to do. So here you can see like how the things need to be displayed in the stores. Yeah, please put uh, one one cognac here, another brand here. So all the information are explained directly in the PDF files. And finally, we have a, a playbook module. It's like a general information, for example, uh, uh, trainings. Uh, well all content, all kind of global global information that are not specific to, are not specifically in use. So we always have the same interface with filters, uh, information and the detail of information. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not in use. For example, it can be useful links, it can be whatever things on the internet. This is all the front office part. Uh, and from a, a back end point of view, so you have a couple of dashboards. So if you want, if you want to see, for example, the 
import dashboards because I saw somebody taking pictures before. Uh, this is what looks like the, the import dashboards. So you have, we can import here a file. Uh, once imploded, you will you will get uh, a status, and then it will be processed by the queue. So I can filter by status. For example, I want to see all the uh, all the um, all the import that error just to check what happens, and then I can see uh, the error logs to see what happened. Um, we have a couple of dashboards. For example, uh, um, yeah, it's pre-filtered by author. Uh, we have a couple of dashboards for the contributors from this is a dashboard with an overview on all the news uh, what the useful information here is you can see to who did you send this, this information and you can also i don't know if you see there is a percentage of people who processed this uh, this information so for example if i check this well commerce october i think that 50 percent of the my scope uh completed the news well we can see that it was only addressed to two store uh, and I click on it, then I get the detail. Okay, I know that this store processed the information, and and this one didn't. And I know the the person was responsible of this action. Um, I can also show you the KPI. So we built a couple of KPI based on on use on users. Um, So you have, dif as I said, you have different information. The, the time, the, um, the time that people are taking to process information, uh, the number of information processed, the number of information processed by months per universe. So all those things are illustrated by each time a dashboard and and a small graph, uh, small chart, just to see to see it in, in an easy way. So it's very easy then to create reports uh, for their managers. Um, and yeah, it's 11.30, so I think that's it for the demo. If you want to see specific things, uh, I can show you this a bit later. Now we have some, some spare time for questions, so feel free to ask me any questions that you like to have, yeah. Okay, so for the questions, yeah, first question, yes. So um, to implement the scope of visibility, we, we use the organic groups module. Uh, so all our scope is actually only taxonomies. Each level of our structure is taxonomy. So a country is a taxonomy, a store is a taxonomy. And then we assign this, the same taxonomies to the user. So as the content is assigned to specific taxonomy and the user assigns taxonomy, uh, then organic groups is, is able to build those permissions according to this. So if a specific user is not assigned to a store, he's not able to access the news. And for the second questions, uh, so I didn't understand. Yes. So th this is just, yeah, this is a, a views with a infinite, infinite scroll. Uh, all the so it, it's not uh, an Angular JS uh, interface. This is what was your question. This is just uh, basic uh, basic AJAX uh, basic AJAX in in Drupal. Uh, so this is the front end of Drupal. Uh, all the all the AJAX are directly calling Drupal. There is uh, there is no REST or uh, or Angular JS behind this. Um, we have, I think, about three three thousand users in total. Other question? Nope. Is there something you need to to see specifically in the interface? Something you like me to to redo, or well, something you might be interested by? Nope. Okay, thank you guys for your time and uh, have a good day.